For over a thousand generations, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice in the old republic. Before the dark times, before the Empire. If you are the I'll show you the dark side. We will be on you. Don't worry, Archer. We're going. We're going. That's it, huh? What's going on? First of all, what you have there? I am a Jedi. Like my father. Welcome back to Blows! Yay! Um, I just want to start this week's show by announcing uh, Brady you've been on the show a while now <laughs> we'd like to welcome oh you god. officially with this miniature bottle of Prosecco oh my god which you must so now cute. down um, <laughs> to the show this week uh, as our Aww. third co-host so guys big round of applause for Brady officially yeah. now That's officially the presenter of uh, blood wars. Oh, how how do you feel? Well, I will drink this in two and a half months. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you two idiots have decided to stop drinking alcohol and it's like now it's that coming up to the summer. I know. I think you've really mistimed this. Yeah, no joke. <laughs> I like to punish myself <laughs> do you? the happiest time of the year. And you're dragging yeah. me along in with you. In the fucking bollocks. Yeah, why not? <laughs> By the uh, sound of it, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, the new gear we're using... Is broken. No, it's it's working fine now. It had a fucking moment ago. <laughs> but anyway, the new gear we're using, we're using new mics, we've got a new audio interface. It was bought by us with the money we made from selling Blah Wars shirts, <gasps> which our listeners bought. So if you bought a Blah Wars shirt, you have improved the quality of the show because we've now got all this lovely gear that we're able to record this week's and last we're week's. We're going to design more shirts, so get your wallets out. Talking of shirts. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah, I want one. You're now officially a member of the family. I've got you a blow shirt in oh, medium. That's so, so cute. Might be small, but they're all gone. Tell your sister, yeah? Tell your sister, My sister yeah. already knows. Yeah. She's right. now an avid follower. Do you know what? Tell, tell your her sister to tell you. From. What? Tell your sister the relevance of that. Um... Oh, wait, um, tell your sister she was right. Yes, yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My ex used that's to think it was sexist. Show. She used to think it was about, like, fucking your sister. I know, but don't it was be so absolutely insane. So, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody who bought a shirt because you've massively improved the show this week. And solo <laughs> teasers are back. More additional footage. Have, Have you, you seen them? Yourself? Yeah, I've teased myself. Have you? <laughs> what? All right, Oh, oh Lord. Um... Ah. You see these guys? You've, you've seen the, the the crew and risk teaser trailers, TV spots. Yeah. Uh, I uh, haven't actually. You're kidding me? No. Wanna get your phones out? Oh, I'm gonna go right. Get your phones out. Big shot gangster putting together crew. You in? I waited a long time for a shot like this. What are you doing with Harry and the boy? We need a ship. Harry and the boy. Every ship isn't for everyone, but you need a particular type of pilot. You done flirting? Love that train. These people are not your friends. There's a lesson to be learned here. And love that. Oh, I've got a good feeling about this. They like Beautiful. Music. So what's your name anyway? Hey kid. Listen to me. Big shot gangster. He's putting together a crew. Low rider music. You think yeah, everything that. sounds like a bad idea? If you come with me, you're in this life for good. I waited a I'm long time to see for her. a shot like yeah. this. Oh. <laughs> Warwick Davis there. I love this bit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I got a really good feeling about this. One of oh, our listeners nice. said it's a shame they put that little gag with the cards in the fil- in the trailer because that's the sort of thing that would be much better first yeah. revealed in the I agree. In the film. I think all the trailers might potentially be just like spoiling everything. It's like, it's like what they do with Marvel. Here's the whole film. I know. Gradually. Yeah, out of order, yeah. gradually over months. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's a bit too it's much, isn't good. it? They did it with The Last wouldn't. Jedi, yeah. and the last couple of days leading up to The Last Jedi, 
they really went to town with I'm it. I'm really looking forward to that train scene in the Han Solo where they're running over. Yeah. yeah. It really feels like a Western. Mm. Yeah, for sure. You know sure. Like in Westerns, they're running across the roofs of the train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the equivalent. Yeah, yeah. amazing. Uh, yeah. Call back to another Lucas film as well. Yeah. Indiana Jones, Last Crusade. Oh, love Indiana Jones. Falls in the Snakes. Yeah. Your dad... Oh, go on. It's on Instagram the other day, mate. Uh, what's he done now? He was down the harvester with, with your mum. <laughs> <laughs> Is he a big harvester? Oh, it just reminded me of harvester I've not been to one for years. Is it big where they live? Uh, the harvester? No. I, I mean, I remember going all the time in the 90s. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. That? For a Have salad. And there was always way too much sweet Yeah, yeah, because yeah, it's free salad. Unlimited salad car. Is it? You go in there and you just help yourself to bowls full of That's why sweet there, corn, he's on a diet. croutons... Oh right! <laughs> you yeah. Cover it in like we could go sour Brady cream. On our diet. Brady, <laughs> have you, um, yeah. Yeah, you you've been to a harvester before? Never no, I haven't. I, no, because I'm I'm like a child of Weatherspoons. Right, it's so way more up market we... than Weatherspoons because it's proper. Yeah, you can it sounds see it. The kitchen's open plan. You can see <laughs> it's the sort of place that Alan Partridge would go. Yeah, totally. It, take a date. You, what you do is you start oh off, you start yeah, off with yeah, an yeah, exactly free mean. salad. So yeah. you go for bowls and bowls of the stuff. Pizza Hut used to do that. Yeah, and then. They have the ice cream factory at Pizza Hut, oh which they god. don't have here. That's so Remember good. Remember that, with all the Smarties. Oh my god. And then you, then you get like a main, <laughs> and we're talking about like grilled meat here. We're talking about steak, we're talking about ribs, <laughs> we're talking about pork, right? And then to top it all off, if you can even finish that, they bring out the desserts. The desserts are ice cream sundaes, and they come in like an FA cup size glass <laughs> chalice don't they yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like a Stella glass right that's it full when, of we ice go, <laughs> when we all get down to my, my dad's house when we raid the attic for all my yeah. old Star Wars toys we're all going for a half <gasps> oh my god yeah, yes. that. and you call oh the cob oh I yeah call, call, not <laughs> unlimited that. salad not what's wrong with no, I love it. what's wrong I mean, with that I mean well A tastes of nothing uh, buttery what? Put butter all and over sweetness. it. It's a bit painful, painful to eat because it will get stuck in your teeth. I saw this true. bird on, um, sorry, woman, lady, <laughs> lovely lady she was. So <laughs> got on, anything uh, to do with the woman yeah. being on the show now, Judy? On, you uh, become... on YouTube, yeah. she shoved a drill bit through a corner of the cloth. So you're going to say something else? <laughs> 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 I think it wasn't YouTube, mate, like, was it? It was you poor. No, yeah. I don't watch that film. Okay. All right. Drill bit through the corner of the cloth like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. And then she's <laughs> great radio. She's she's, uh, she's hit the on button on the drill, so this corner cob spins oh my God. Out, and she's gone to eat, eat it like that. Yeah, teeth just go <gasps> everywhere. Oh, oh, and she's staring at the camera, going, God. "What's happening?" I tell you, what's happening? <laughs> You're mental. Stressed out. Going back to the train thing, a couple of things. Yes, and the hand side of the train thing. One of the best uh, comments we had this week on Instagram following the last show Mm. comes from Kim Williams Photography, who says this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kim's awesome. Do you know her? Yeah. Oh, right, okay, fair enough. Well, I know her because I follow her on Instagram. I've never met her. All right, yeah, I wasn't... Uh, She says, I'm going to have to stop listening to this on the trains because I laugh way too much and get stared at. Um, Yeah. I've had a similar thing with other podcasts, but the I've had a similar thing while I'm editing our show on the train <laughs> home, just laughing to myself yeah, well, aloud. This morning, I was your listening to comments. our last podcast, and I hardly ever listen. Honestly, I was yeah. like, it goes yeah. out. And I have to it. listen to it to edit it, but once I, I listen to it, it's kind of gone. Saying yeah. Fanny out of. <laughs> Nowhere. <laughs> she said uh, Disney's fanny thing. Oh, it was come on. It wasn't of, enough to say it once. I know, I yeah. she said it's really nipped back in. <laughs> and then you apologise. I had coffee on the tube this morning. <laughs> spat it over an uh, unsuspecting old woman. That's called karma. I went, oh, sorry, love. Yeah. Well, <laughs> things happen. I said, yeah, she said fanny. I mean, you can't hear it. And it all just got a bit weird and confusing. It's okay. It's good to be, I think it's good to be laughing like at something when you've got headphones on. Yeah. But then you forget that everyone in the carriage can just... There's nothing apart from <laughs> the sound I mean, of yeah, someone going... It's worth it. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's worth if you're laughing. laughing but at least you're wearing headphones. It's worse if you're laughing and you're not wearing headphones. Do you remember when everyone when it was really faddy to have those earpieces? They Bluetooth kind of come back now, yeah. haven't they? AirPods and then are in you now. Get, it's just people just standing around talking to themselves aloud without holding a phone up to their ear. That's people oh. walking towards me talking and I'm going, you yeah. want me? <laughs> Oh, it's, it's on quite the phone, clear on they're the not phone. talking to you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on the phone. Those are wankers just walking around. So I like to just take the piss by walking around them, nearby, without any earphones, and just talk, having a conversation with myself aloud, just to sort of humiliate them. There's no difference at all as far as I'm concerned. If you haven't got something pressed up to your ear, 
You're not on the phone, as far as yeah. I'm concerned. That's the go- that's the rule. A girl did start singing on the tube, like oh, yeah, the other day. I don't like sing that. With their fucking I don't like in. that. No one wants to fucking hear you I know. sing. You must know that your voice is irritating. irritating. Really, Everybody. really irritating. Yeah, if you, if you, so, I'll tell you another thing that happened on the tube. Nothing yeah. to do with Star Wars. <laughs> not singing. A whole band came down. Trumpets, oh. drums, all oh of that. Oh my god! You know those new tubes. Tube trains and it, the whole thing you can YouTube walk through. Every, yeah, oh, yeah, the new modern yeah, tubes. You can walk yeah. through every carriage. Yeah, it's not great big snake. Like, Here it coming. I'm looking at the map, <laughs> going nearly there, nearly there, <laughs> nearly there. We're getting towards Marleybone, and the train stops. <laughs> I'm fuming. Turn around, trumpet in the face. I went, oh. The music stops. I am piss off, mate. Everyone looked at me, and he went. <laughs> and, just, and then they start doing this little jig and dance thing. and everything yeah. around me and I had the right arm yeah. <laughs> standing there oh humiliated stop and your berry red head your whole head had <laughs> got turned red I mean I hope they make the, 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 the price of their train ticket back from the money they make <laughs> yeah I do too I imagine they jump the fence jump the yeah no. Barry <laughs> I'm just that. Stealing, uh, stealing the the the, the ride. Did you see the Star Wars show this week? We both hate the Star. Did you watch this? The Star Wars no. show. No. Welcome to the goes, Star, Star Wars show. show. It's a Disney produced show, mm-hmm. like a weekly free podcast on YouTube, presented by two people who clearly don't have any interest in talking to each other. <laughs> um, one of them's called Andy. One of them's called Alex. I think. Yeah, it's like. Uh, oh, it's horrible. horrible. We've talked about it before, but, but everybody but watches if, it. The Star Wars show came to us and said, do you want to be on it? Yeah, we'd be down there in the shop. <laughs> yeah, if, do you like our show? Yeah, love it. Yeah, we it. love it. Yeah. We have watched every episode. episode. I watch we every episode. It. I just fucking hate it. Just think that they've got no dynamic. It's all really obviously scripted. But they had a conversation with Larry and... Kasdan. Yeah, Jake Kasdan. Father and son team now writing the Star Wars scripts. Mm. Well, Larry Kasdan wrote Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi and Force Awakens. And he's been asked to do Solo as well. So he wrote that with his son because he said... He and his son had so many conversations about it. Mm. Um, but in the little conversation they have, which is worth checking out uh, for this, this one particular episode of the Star Wars show, it says, to underst- this is what Jake said, to understand who Enfy's Nest is, that's pronounced Enfy's, by the way. Enfy's. Enfy's Nest is, you've really got to understand Tobias Beckett, that's the Woody Harrison character, mm-hmm. um, who is a highly trained, very lethal criminal. He's a real pro. He's into big jobs is he? <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh there, sorry. And uh, he runs a crew, but one of their competitors is a more pirate like gang, and the leader of that gang is Enfy's Nest. So that ah. sets you up with the perspective yeah. on how the, how the characters in this are going to work. It's rivalry. It's rivalry mm. heist stuff. Nice. Interesting. And the Empire's probably all in the background. Maybe they're robbing the Empire. That'd be cool. I reckon Maybe. that's what they're doing. Yeah. What do you yeah. want it to be, Brady? Mm. Um, I love the idea that, that Star Wars has given us this kind of like space pirate queen. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I read that in order to find out who Enfys 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 nest is, you yeah, have Enfys. to. Yeah, I, it's Enfys. Sorry, Enfys. you're right. Enfys. <laughs> in order to, fight, to sort of know who she is, you, they said look back at legends, but I don't know anything about Star Wars legends. So, can no. you tell us no, who it is, Jude? It is and I went, well, there's nothing about her. I can't. I, I looked on. But the who she really is, is underneath the mask? No, there's nothing. There's no information at all. Her name, unless they changed her name. But that's what I'm saying. It's like whoever she's mask. She's masquerading as Enfys Nest. Right. So whoever she is, because she she's wearing a mask. Her characters don't wear masks unless she's they're hiding their identity. Like, um, it's like the female sand trooper. So I know what you mean, some person. person. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. Like, it's a skull like, she's wearing. Like she's wearing like an, a creature's skull. Yeah. It's been repurposed as a mask. And she's got all <laughs> kind of fur like, on her and teeth and stuff all along her. Maybe her she's chest. like an amalgamation of like a bunch of different female characters from Legends, and that's what they mean because it could be that. Maybe, yeah. sometimes they do that. Looking around, going, oh, there's nothing yeah. There's well, there's a lot of comics in the seventies, right? Well, what frequently happens in the comics in the seventies, they don't they don't really involve the Empire that much. It's usually Han Solo and Chewbacca are flying around the universe, and then they get encounter some horrible pirates. And I'm talking about men with big furry pants on and stuff like that. You know, it's like really superhero Flash yeah. Gordon like. Um, but they basically just want to rob. Han Solo of his money, his reward money, 
yeah. that he gets from A New Hope. Yeah. And, uh, and then he goes on this bizarre chase around the galaxy to get his money back. So you end up with all those characters. I reckon they've simply taken ideas from those those kind of like yeah. comics that were around in the 70s. Do you know what? I had an idea the other day because, um, you know, um, you know, like all of a sudden Han Solo and Chewie just sort of rock up on the Falcon and um, Force Awakens mm. yeah. and they're like, oh, we're home. Um, which was a really interesting sentence, I thought. And you know, you don't After actually know space for like two where minutes. they come from. And also, yeah. like, he's so attached to that ship. How did he? Man- how did he stay away from it uh, for so long? Yeah. And then I remembered one of you guys were saying about how they introduced time. They've sort of introduced time travel into uh, rebels. Rebels. Yeah. Yeah. Which now technically makes it canon, right? Technically, yeah. So I was just curious if at one point I've just I was just thinking to myself like, how did he stay away from it for so long, and why did he just pop back up on it yeah. in the middle of space, in the middle of nowhere? I know. With absolutely with no tracking, it. how did he yeah. how did he get back to it? Well, he said they. I think he said they tracked them. I don't know. It's very I just wonder convenient. whether it could. It's a really convenient the, kind of that annoyed me. Actually. It did annoy me too. It that me whole, too. I, in fact, that whole Han Solo um, tell that to Kanji Club mm. thing. That was just totally <laughs> well, I don't understand. Wild. You know what they could have just done? They could have simply just had Han Solo on board the ship at Jakku. They run on board it, <clears throat> yeah, uh, thinking it's empty, and find him and shoot back there. It would be funny counter. if he's like an old man and he's just having a sleep. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like they, they fly off and then he wakes up. What the fuck are you doing on my shit? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, that would have been that would have been cool. Yeah. That would have been cool. And he goes and picks up Chewbacca. And I just like it. Just it was seemed so disingenuous to me that that Han Solo and Chewie would be away from the Falcon for that period of time, and it's literally just sat on Jakku. Mm. Yeah, so I was like, so how how did that happen? Why did they just pop back on it? And then I remembered time travel and wonder whether that had had something to do with Interesting it. Interesting theory. Anyway, time will prove <laughs> everything. Time travel will prove everything. Um, have you heard? There's a really cool interview with Mark Hamill that's out now. It came out last week. I know it exists, but Un- I haven't seen unfiltered. it yet. I really oh, I can't wait so to see the it. The Unfiltered Podcast, check it out, it's on YouTube. It's um, a conversation with Mark Hamill. It's uh, hosted by James O'Brien. Like, it's like a podcast. Every every week he has an hour chat with, with somebody, a comedian, presenter, yeah, whatever, yeah. Um, personality. He talks to Mark Hamill and he, he has a we conversation with Mark him Hamill. about... Mark Hamill's mainly about... We should. I think he'd be up we for should. it. We should. He'd be love to come on the show. And we just tell him we're the UK's most popular Star Wars podcast and he'd be like, you'd be down with that, aren't you? On Spotify. Like, I'll send him a check, yeah? <laughs> yeah, uh, that's... How, how, many, how, how long do you want us for? Half hour, okay, that's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. £100,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so if our listeners want it, um, they can raise money for it. So, <laughs> t-shirts. Yeah, exactly. We have to sell a lot of t-shirts to afford Mark Hamill. He goes on the show, and the first... I mean, they're mainly talking about Mark's career pre-Star Wars, for about 45 minutes. Then about 15 minutes of the interview was is... school, wasn't it? Yeah. Cut, cut, well, school <laughs> and like, the odd jobs he did and how he got into acting, I suppose. Um, then they talk about The Last Jedi. Yeah. Okay. And he says, you famously came out saying you didn't like this film, whatever. And he goes, well, I made all those remarks before I'd seen the film. I'd made those remarks based on what I read in the script Mm -hmm. and how my character is treated in the story. Yeah. And he then goes on to explain that he really likes The Last Jedi and thinks it's a good film. And he even goes on to say things like, uh, you killed Snoke. And he's like going, JJ said to me, uh, not JJ, um, Ryan said to me, I've done the best service possible for this film. I've killed this emperor stand-in guy because yeah. he doesn't have a backstory we don't have to explain that it's irrelevant so he's basically echoing all the things we were saying a couple of <laughs> months ago yeah. straight from Ryan Johnson so he basically quotes Ryan Johnson as uh, but his attitude but I mean it does set up mine perfectly like yeah. Kylo and Ray is just going to yeah well he, sa- he says that it clears the way yeah. you kill yeah. Snow it clears the way for Kylo and uh, Ray to encounter each other and head, head, head on collision Absolutely. Yeah, that's going to be interesting. But another good podcast that's out right now that people should listen to, Go on. as well as this one, is Richard Herring's Lesser Square Theatre podcast. Well, that's it then. Goodbye. Because Blah this Wars week, they're, this going week off to Richard. they're talking to. <laughs> uh, the latest episode is an interview with Brian Blessed, yeah. who is one of the most strangest and eccentric Englishmen. Yeah, Brian Blessed of Flash Gordon fame. You know who Brian Blessed is? Mm-hmm. But also, who is he in Star Wars? Boss Nass. Boss Nass, the leader of the Gun Guns, okay? So it's slightly relevant. But did you know, 
Brian Blessed, he's got the lungs of... He's like an 83-year-old man. Oh, he's incredibly loud. He's like this big, booming presence. He kind of takes over the Brian whole show. Brian Blessed! Two really weird things about him. Okay, uh, I want you to get your phones out now and actually look this one up. If you Google, and people at home can do this as well, <laughs> get in Google now and Google Brian Blessed Foot. Okay. Oh, God, do I want to do this? <laughs> he has got the weirdest fucking foot. He, he injured it when he was a kid, and it looks like a giant's hand is trying to grow out of his leg. <laughs> oh, Jesus, really? It's like a frog. Oh, oh my God. God. What is that? <laughs> Isn't it fucking bizarre? It's the weirdest thing you've ever seen. Jesus. It looks so like a car ran over it or something. What did, it, what did he do to that? So he fell off a bridge, apparently, quite a oh high my bridge. Oh, God. How did you fall out of the water? He was doing something, he was playing around as a kid and Apparently, fell off a massive he climbed bridge. Everest with that foot. Yeah, he did. did he's, he? he survived yeah. as well. He's got the lungs of like an astronaut, they say. And he's the, incredibly and the, powerful and strong. Well, I mean, he can balance well on that, he's, I imagine. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> There's no trouble standing that. on that. So, why, what, 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 what do you have to get special shoes or something? I don't know, it fits yeah, inside his shoe. He's wearing normal trainers on the show. But basically, that picture wow. there is when that was on. A, he was on, he was doing a TV interview in a hospital, and someone said to him, "The subject of feet came up," and he his goes, "I've got a weird foot." And he literally <laughs> took his show, shoe off and showed everybody, and they were like, "Fucking hell!" So it, that's why it's sort of <laughs> weird because it's like a screen capture from TV. Scared kids when he on the beach. It's a very f- he's a very foul mouthed man. If you actually w- listen to this podcast, you'll hear him saying things that make a whore blush. No, no. <laughs> Present company accepted. Excuse me. Sorry. I take it back. Sorry. Um, <laughs> oh, Brody, I'm face. sorry. She looks really upset. Um, but no, the other thing about Brian Blessed is, a couple of years is completely true. I knew about this before the show, the po- before the podcast. He was walking through Richmond Park a couple of years ago <laughs> and he heard a woman screaming. Right, uh-huh. okay. okay. And he, <laughs> yeah. he yeah. ran over and found a woman laying on the floor, right. pregnant woman laying on the floor, okay, uh-huh. screaming. <laughs> she said, My baby's coming, my baby's coming, right? So he, for real? he pulled her legs apart and pulled her pants off on the floor, on the floor, on the grass in, in Richmond. <laughs> and he could <laughs> see he John, could see what? the baby coming out. And he said that he's, he was actually, he grew up in a big home, big, big family, and delivering babies at home was a normal thing that children with did weird, with right. their wow. mum what? when they were kids. Anyway, so he knew exactly what was Where going did grow on. up? Anyway, oh, in North or somewhere, I don't know. <laughs> somewhere uh, not. Somewhere up <laughs> Yorkshire in the fucking third world, you know, <laughs> in the 50s. Anyway, or the war, war years, I suppose that children were more helpful around the home. They weren't fucking around playing on their Xboxes <laughs> Listening when to their mum was giving birth downstairs. Watching Star Wars, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, so... He, the head's poking out, so he delivers the baby, uh-huh. and then he <laughs> to cut the umbilical cord. Oh, you're gonna say? I know what you're gonna say. I knew, I knew no it. Fucking, I knew no it. fucking lie. He oh, fucking Jesus. bites in half <laughs> the umbilical cord. <laughs> Imagine just chewing oh, on it. Jesus. Like Jaws in oh, the Bond mate. film Moonraker. The placenta. Um, he, he got Probably her he beat it up, took it home, and I don't know. Oh, he Jesus. made her force it all out and everything because he knew it had force to come out. Force it all out? Yeah. He made her force it all out. Pulled it oh, out man. with the afterbirth and stuff. And what did they do with the baby? Um, well, Obviously. the baby, he yeah. took off his shirt and wrapped right, it in, okay, in yeah. his shirt, yeah. gave it to the woman, yeah. and he said that she's, she's never been in touch with him since. <laughs> I'm not Jesus really surprised, Christ. but he delivered he a woman's baby in Richmond like Park. <laughs> yeah. Blood and oh, down his mouth. God. Just, all down his big beard as well. Yeah. Oh, oh, man, come on. Percentage after birth in his Jesus, beard. Jesus, stop it. Oh, my God. <laughs> Seems like a good idea at the time. <laughs> <laughs> we always bring it back to cannibalism. <laughs> We're not John we. John brings it back to cannibalism. I haven't eaten meat for three, four weeks now. I've, uh, cause I'm dating a, um, a v- vegan. I'm not going to go vegan. Don't fucking worry about that. <laughs> cheese, I mean, come on. Can't, yeah, can't go without cheese. But I'm eating fish and stuff. I just won't eat meat now. Thought I'd give it... Give it, give it the, el- the old Enjoy elbow. It. Enjoying it? Yeah, doing okay. Um, I got really tempted by a sausage roll at um, <laughs> Clapham. Clapham Junction. I could smell the hot sausage rolls. Uh, mate, if you ever want a sausage roll, go to Clapham Junction. <laughs> <laughs> what an amazing place for sausage roll. <laughs> 
suppose it's there. I can smell the hot kind of Greg's fatty pastry sausage roll. Yeah. But because I'm not eating as much meat, I'm not eating any pastry now, really. So oh, I love pastry. It's good though, isn't it? On a croissant. Yeah. Croissant, let's not sorry. talk about croissants. Why not? Are you Because I eat can't anything? eat them right now. So what can you eat? What do you do? You get up and you have some grey matter and just <laughs> lick that off a spoon, do you? Um, no. Drink a glass of water Pancakes. slowly. Yeah. Steak. I had a steak this morning. Hang on, so you can eat fatty things, but you've just got to moderate yeah. it. Yeah? yeah Everything's yeah. being counted. Yeah, but also, like, you know, you this have to do... This is our weekly the... ketosis update. <laughs> 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 New bit of the show. You see, who <laughs> Star Wars should go on a diet, apart from Jabba the Hutt? Um, oh, come on. No, I, I, I think... Um, Bosnas. Are we going to judge women's sizes no. on this no, show? We're no, we're def- we're absolutely not going to do that. Then definitely nobody. Yeah. Is there we any we uh, male characters? Size. No, we can't really. It's not really fair to make fun of how people look. But if we were going to, <laughs> what would we? What about? I'll tell you what. Jabba's Palace. During the dance number, there's a really <laughs> massive woman like kind of kicking her legs around. Have you seen that? She's fucking huge. She could definitely use a few. She could. She could. She could definitely. Yeah, not see that. She could. You know what I'm talking about? I don't. In the bit where the woman's pulling on Jabba's chain and he throws her down the pit. There's a yeah. massive woman also oh. striding. And she's like kicking her feet yeah, out. The road colours. The road colours got her Wait, design on that one. <laughs> Down. There'll be other prisoners are sitting uh, there waiting three weeks to be eaten. Oh, Bloody hell. Dexter from the uh, from the <laughs> the bar. All we want. Like you could definitely yeah. get a meal out of him. Yeah. We're talking about eating these people or just letting them lose no, weight. Letting them have a diet, mate. What's wrong with you? A Cam Duke could, right. could do with losing a few. Oh we could. He's got like a triple chin. Have you seen that bit where he gets his hands cut off? He's got like three chins. Yeah, mate, but he's an old man. That's some saggage. He's got a bit of a bit of a belly. Is that He's what got a bit is of a belly. I think. Yeah. I have two though, to be fair. So it's getting worse now. It's getting harder to stop the not, belly. Not so now you're a vegetarian. Huh? Not now you're a vegetarian. No, it should be easier. It'll be easier to lose well, weight. Well, as long as you, you well, know. if you replace meat with cheese, no. No. But if. Um, <laughs> it's just a cheese steak tonight. It's yeah. A quarter, quarter pounder of cheese, yeah. In the world of Battlefront, we're finally getting a new update. Do you know much about. But you don't, you two don't play it, do you? No. We Battlefront 2. <laughs> what? You don't play Xbox? Some of the time. Used to. I'm, I haven't got time. The new add on is a fucking Ewok game. What? Yeah, you play this new game, it's available today, and you hunt Ewoks. Hey, why would you do that? I thought you were played as an. You no, know, you can play as both. You either play, if you're the. You know, when you go in the room, there's like 40 players 20 are Imperial, 20 yeah. are Rebel. And if you're on the Rebel side, you'll play as Ewoks. So you can Nobody wants to see teddy bears die. They no. didn't then, they don't now. You can, you can be. A you, you go Ewok. into the forest and you have to shoot dead Ewoks. And you're Jesus. a country. If you're on the Empire side. Right, and this is the thing that annoys me the most, I think, about any Star Wars film. Cool. Right? Those little bears with yeah. their sticks and stones, yeah. throwing stones at the, the stormtroopers. Yeah. You see the stones bouncing off the armour, but the, the stormtroopers are still falling down going, Ah! Dead. Yeah. Having a laugh. What's that about? Of they might have like super ropes. teddy bear strength for all we know. Yeah, well, when they, they throw them, they can throw them really hard. To drop boulders on scout walkers, to trip scout walkers up with rope. Just I think it's there. about the fact the sheer number of them overwhelm the Empire. It's a bit cat- Legions though, of his best troops, though, he says. I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I'm sat there trying to defend troops. that whole scene <laughs> as a Star Wars fan. Deep down, I know. Yeah, we all know. We all know, but no one's <laughs> going to be honest enough to... Before we went on air, I asked some of our listeners to chip in with any questions they had, and somebody uh, said... Uh, somebody called uh, Big D 1985 uh, said I'd personally like to see a Star Wars related TV show to extend extend the storyline such as the Bounty Hunters not animated either he's talking live action if we're doing a Star Wars live TV show what are we doing? I think they are doing a Netflix or yeah but what, 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 let's, let's debate this Where we've never talked about live TV show before we get in a TV show yeah you get to spread a story over like 10 hours yeah. if you do 10 episodes mm-hmm. rather than over 2 Character development and all that kind of stuff turns to the dark side and all that kind of thing mm-hmm. is much more believable. They do it over Marvel, ten hours, like, true. With Jessica Jones and stuff, like right? That. Oh, I love that. That's Agents of Shield and all yeah. that. Yeah. yeah, it's kind of like you don't go very far. It's sort no. of secluded, grounded a little yeah. bit. But I think they should. If you're going to do that, 
you should do it the same way they do it with True Detective, which is like it has like a it has a cut off period. Otherwise, what you get is like a great season one if you're lucky, mm. and then a shoddy, and then like a mediocre season two. Season two, and then it all goes downhill after that for yeah. pretty much every single series known to man. I mean, like I can, I can basically stomach Board about. Empire did okay. I can basically stomach like a season and a half of pretty much any TV right. show, and then I'm kind of like okay, because it always gets to a point where they as an audience that you have to suspend your disbelief and they just push it a bit too far but yeah. there's always just one thing that happens and you're just like okay right I'm out yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. do you know what I'd love I'd love a TV show where you're on the Empress, you're on the Empire side yeah, yeah. that like would be the great ca- the main characters on the Empire and they infiltrate the rebels or something see and that's the way for like, them to do it because see a different perspective yeah. see that's the way for them to do it because it would really annoy me if it was done from like the rebels side and they completely butchered it after first season whereas mm. if they screw it up with it's Empire I don't care that what much what about if the no. story was set taking place about like a family who just are having a normal life and then one day war comes to their planet the Empire yeah. comes to their planet that would be crap I'm not interested I like the idea of the politics within the um, Empire the military politics and yeah. then the a backstabbing e- I guess the economic the politics the they must that. have as well yeah yeah, yeah yeah like I'd love to see like a okay a plan to assassinate Mon Mothra or something oh, how about a police crime uh, murder detective show like oh, like, like, <laughs> like CSI but in the Star Wars universe, so every week there's a dead alien to find out who did it. That'd be cool. Well, after we've done the prequels, maybe we can just do a um, Empire focused. Yeah. yeah, a Star Wars version of Miami Vice, right? They're stopping contraband being smuggled. The, 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 every week, the villains are people like Han Solo, Lando Calrissian, smugglers, gangsters. That'd be pretty cool. They go around the galaxy. Mm. They're Imperial officers, but Space they Sherlock. they drive really posh. Spaceships and they dress really snazzy. It's stylish. Spaceship. They go undercover. They go undercover. They infiltrate gangs like Jabba's Palace. Yeah. And uh, the Black Sun organization and all these kind of things. I'd like I like a, a Pride and Pre- Prejudice on or like a Downton Abbey on the Boo. You can imagine <laughs> that with the gun guns as buttons oh, right. and stuff. Oh wow. Um... Period drama. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not, the... not like not like that. Yeah. John. John. <laughs> John. Christ John. my <laughs> Oh, Can you yeah. have a period of... Have you, you know what I thought we could do on a future show, by the way? Nothing to do with periods. Um, well, it kind of. But um, you know that you can get the Empire Strikes Back, Return of the Jedi and Star Wars as Shakespeare yes. plays. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In the style of Shakespeare. Yeah. Would you guys be up for acting those out? I'm actually pretty good at reading Shakespeare. Only if you can wear I'd, a ruff. Really? You yeah. always wear a ruff. No, we'll see. I, 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 I like to read Shakespeare. I think I could do... Not with this accent. Oh, you it could be, be great. Quite really funny because you could great. play all the, all the dumb characters. Besides, like, tons of... <laughs> what the hell? Is that the perception no, 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 of me? No, no, no. A dumb Besides, um, twat. Tons, tons, to, of, do... tons of, like, great <clears throat> state, great um, actors have done it on stage in lots of different accents for lots of different characters. The Kenneth so. Branagh's of this world and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Big pop so, twats. Yeah, that <laughs> sounds good. Um, big news today. The only real big news today. Go on is that um, Victoria Mahoney, mm-hmm. you've not heard of her, have you? No. She's a director. She's directed episodes of Grey's Anatomy. She's been named as the second unit director for Star Wars Episode Nine. Why is that a big deal? Because she's the first ever second unit director, or she's going to be directing large portions of Episode Nine. Yeah. Stunts, establishing shots, um, yeah. uh, cutaways, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. She's, not only is she's, she a woman, but she's also black. So that's a first for Lucasfilm. Good. About, about, about fucking time. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, it might happen. Well, it is going to happen. We might get a female director, actual proper female director for a future well, Star Wars That would be cool. I'd be really interested to see, like, although when I say this, it I sounds inherently sexist when I say it, but I can yeah. say I'd be interested to see how they, how they approach the, the storytelling. And I guess... What, in nine? No, I mean, like, if it, if it was a female director. Oh, yeah. Um, which I guess maybe in a way is inherently sexist, assuming that they would approach it differently because they're Make female. A <laughs> but I think that... Fuck off. No. But oh, I, what I, I think that... The poster would just be of a bloke's arse. 
and, and looking over his shoulder. I think Kylo, up. I'm totally down with that. Yeah? That's absolutely yeah. fine. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, but no, I'm, but I mean, like, um, the way, um, I'd like to see Brian Blessed's foot in Star Wars as his oh own, my as his God. own character. You can imagine it. You can imagine it. Like it's uh, <laughs> a six foot foot. Just a great in Jabba's palace. Yeah, oh, walking around. Man. Sorry to cut you in. I and the thought... colour as well, it's like red. I know, what's with the colour? What's with the colour? <laughs> it's probably that like because he squashes it into his trainers Jesus. and little size nines or something. Well, um, yeah. Oh, good one. Well, you know what we've also got to do with this week's show, which we're not going to do here. Go on. You and I yeah. are going to be picking this up down at Stratford, round the corner. We are, man. And we're going to be taking our competition winner, Graham, down to the void. We're finally doing it. Yeah. And that's coming up next, isn't it? Yeah. So we're going to jump into ex- the future. Explain that experience to me, then. So, the void is called uh, The Void Secrets of the Empire. It's a virtual reality, immersive Star Wars experience where you don virtual reality helmets and some sort of body armour thing. Yeah. Like a bit like paintball. Yeah, no, no, well, a bit it's, like it's, it's on your hands, so you can see stuff. So you put the, the goggles on. There's nothing on your hands. I looked at photos. But so you I don't can, know you can see yeah. your hands. You can see your And you're holding the gun, and you're fully immersed mm-hmm. in the world of the Empire. What? I'm just laughing. It takes place funny. on Mustafar. We know that much. Have I got something on my face? No, it just sounds funny. Just laughing at my face, everyone. <laughs> wow, I can't help it. It's quite a sweet face, isn't it? Um... But anyway, it's, yeah, the idea is that you, uh, you infiltrate an Imperial facility and you're trying to steal something for the Rebellion. Um, and you can shoot stuff. I've only heard really good things about it. So, so wait, are I don't the other think people... it's going to be as good as people think it is. And say it is but... So what, so there, there'll be like characters that you'll interact with? Yeah, you interact, you, one of the main characters you interact with is K2SO from Rogue One. Mm-hmm. He's your kind of Go-to navigator through this world. And then I wonder you, if they got the um, actor to do his voice. Each other as stormtroopers, I wonder if they got the actor to do his voice. Yeah, yes. Uh, oh. Yeah, Alan Tudor. Alan Titchmarsh. What's his name? Alan something. Tudrick or something like that. Alan. There's no time for planting. And Mon Muffler's voice is in it as well, so that's pretty cool. They've done that. Yeah, it should be. I don't know how long the experience is going to last for. All we know is you need a team of four. That's why we offered so a couple of months ago. We offered it as a competition. So ten minutes. Ten minutes, is it? Yeah. All right, cool. And then after we've the done it... ten minutes? Mm. Wow. Well, after we've done it, we're going to pop round to somewhere to get some food and we're going to have a chit-chat with the competition winners, Graham and his mate, Matt. Yeah. And we will... Um, well, you'll hear that bit coming up in a minute, right? And before we run over Stratford, yeah. can I do my plug for that other podcast? Yes, that you month? can, mate. Yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Jude's been uh, moonlighting. Yeah. Been moonlighting Tracing. on the side. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sleeping Giant cards and toys that's his uh, or his Instagram handles SG cards and toys yeah um, but the Sleeping Giant podcast invited me on to talk about Harry Potter if you're into that thing you into that in, thing John? I'm you're well into, into that it, thing, aren't you Brady? Yeah. Brady's well into it There's a sh- I saw a shop in um, Covent Garden <laughs> yeah. sells all magic wands and floating brooms yeah, and shit yeah, like yeah. that floating I went inside <laughs> they were floating yeah. <laughs> I went have you been inside it guys no have no. you not been down there no, go to no, Covent Garden and I'll show you well, oh, really? you a little yeah you've got to go it's the oh, museum amazing. of Harry Potter shit. Like everything's for sale. Wait, did you send right. me a photo of this? I sent you a photo of the doorway. Yes, yes. Just yes. so I come here. Yeah, yeah. Um, I went inside and looked around. Obviously, I didn't know anything about Harry Potter. I mean, I've, I've seen like one film. Yeah. And it was about oh. some kid that was under the stairs. So yeah, I didn't ignore know the films, really. You, the books, the books are where it's at. The ignore the films. Aren't they for children? But anyway, I back was a to child the plug. When I read them. Okay, okay, fine. <laughs> Um, so, so I recorded this thing on Sunday. We chatted for about an hour and a half. Uh, everything Harry Potter. Uh, loads of questions. Good banter. Good chat. Yeah. And uh, yeah, if you like hearing my drivel <laughs> in your ear holes. Yeah. Um, He's well, based in America, isn't he? Him based in America. So yeah, we had to do this transatlantic recording thing. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, went down pretty well, I think. Uh, it's coming out soon. We'll let you know. Have a listen. Go check his podcast out. Go follow him on Instagram. Okay. <laughs> so, so go check his podcast out. Well, and truly, yeah. what's it called? The podcast Sleeping Giant Podcast. Okay, the Sleeping Giant. Giant. So, it's, did you record an episode of Sleeping Giant, or is it a new podcast? It's an episode of Sleeping Giant, right? Okay. Um, with my voice on it. Okay, cool. Well, we'll go and rush over to 
Stratford, and then we'll be back at the end to <laughs> say goodbye. Right. Here at Harvester, we make you feel at home. Hello. Have you ever been to a Harvester before? You can help yourself to the salad cup. You can choose whatever you like. And you know you're going to like whatever you choose. Nobody does things the way we do at Harvester. And when you look around, you'll see why there's nowhere else like it. Harvester. Eating out has never been so good. We are standing in the Stratford uh, Westfield City Shopping Centre, right? Good. You got that out. Clear. Got that Go on. <laughs> nice and loud. We're with Graham. Hello. Who won a competition, when was that? Back in December, November? Yeah, it was about pre-Christmas, to, uh To Long come down here to London and, and do the void with us. Yeah. And um, our slot, we've missed it by about 15 minutes, but um, because you were stuck in traffic. Yes, and I was faffing about. Faffing so, about. Uh, it's kind of my fault. That's though. all right, but we're here now, and the, <laughs> and the, and the staff have said we can uh, do it whenever we want. So you just told them who you were. You're like, you you're say, not know Blah, was it? Oh, right, right away, sir. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. Exactly. And um, so. with you, you brought your mate Matt. Hello. Hey, Matt. All right. Uh, you're a big Star Wars fan? Do you know what? Um, me and Graham have got a mutual love of uh, Back to the Future. Yeah, and good. And through that, um, I've become more of a fan of Star Wars. I'd say Graham is a, a much bigger fan okay. than, than myself. But I appreciate right. it. I, I, I've always wanted a lightsaber. Anybody who likes Back to the Future is okay in my book, mate. It's my favourite film of all time. I think it's the best trilogy of all time. To be I it's think the it only is. trilogy that actually <laughs> works. Uh, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's flawless. It's a good one, yeah. yeah. Well, we're going to go inside there now, do the void, um, and I guess we're going to come out, have some drinks, and we're going to talk about it. And I'm well excited, right? Yeah. We were up there listening, and it's just screaming. Really? People screaming and rolling about. I'm sure that people yeah. haven't been murdered in there. It's not yeah, actually well, just like a... <laughs> if we survive it, yeah. we'll, uh, we'll... Have you seen we'll anyone come out yet? That's no, all that's no. no. They just haven't come seen in. anybody coming out. We've just seen people going in. It's just a shoot. Out through the garbage shoot. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> that, would be cool. like that. that would be good. Good way out. Yeah. yeah. All right then. Well, let's go and do it. Let's do the right, void. Let's go. This is Mon Mothma. I have an assignment for you. The rebellion needs you, and we don't have much time. You must work together. You must not fail. In disguise, your team's mission is to recover Imperial intelligence critical to our survival. You're with me. The rest of you, get on that skiff. Do your best to act Imperial. Looks like you'll have to fight your way out. Our entire existence. Hey, we just come out. Uh, all right, mate. Yeah, that was. Uh, yeah, I'm just disappointed. I'm outside of that world now. Coming out into a shopping centre. There we go. You can hear, you can hear some of the effects of it. Behind, we're sitting very close by. But yeah, you walk out into the mundane reality of a London shopping centre. What did you think of that, Graham? Oh, I'd need a little longer to really process my thoughts. My first thought after I started doing dance moves was all the staff were probably lo looking at me like I'm a complete fool. But yeah, if, if you haven't already done it and there's spaces, I really recommend you try it because you're going to love it. And Matt? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll say it for the record as well. I'm sorry, but I think that's the best thing to come from Star Wars so far. Sorry. I know it's obviously going to be unpopular with you guys, but to be so immersed in... Uh, another another world was unlike anything I've ever experienced. Yeah. Yeah, it, was, it was exactly it was exactly like that. Another world. Yeah. I mean, as soon as you put those helmets on, not for me. And they it took well, about fifteen minutes. Did. I could see. I, was, I thought, oh, I'm the well, blind storm. For, for, for me, Graham and Matt, we we uh, we had those helmets on, and we just suddenly saw these stormtroopers standing. It was yeah. each other, and we were just poking each other for the first right, couple of right. minutes. 
And you wave your hand in front of the screen and your hand <laughs> is just a stormtrooper's hand. It was weird because I couldn't see two, but I couldn't see one at a time. Oh, I see. I, I, I found I had to wave my hand in front of my eyes to get the hand to appear. You had to put it a, a bit of a distance away, didn't you? It wasn't like yeah. if you yeah. actually put yeah, obviously, yeah, yeah. you know, put your hand out. So <laughs> it felt a bit, oh, well, that's not natural, but you quickly got over it. The yeah. only, the only um, part of the experience which wasn't perfect, I, I was a little bit glitchy, was each other, wasn't it? Because obviously yeah. the, the yeah. tracking our movements, but... As you were saying, Graham, that the, the movements of our enemies that we were shooting was flawless, and when you shot them, they went down. You hit and them. when they shot you, you felt it. It was yeah. It yeah. Was crazy. I, when I got hit a few times, I kind of did a little uh, a little dance to myself, yeah. thinking that, that didn't hurt. Why have I just done that? Yeah. <laughs> we came out. Yeah. And, uh... Well, the thing is that the the, the the vest you're wearing are vibrating, mm. and they they vibrate when you get shot. And there's also this mm. kind of speckling feeling of like sparks landing on you yeah as well because there's a lot of sparks going on in there do you know what was amazing what you'd step out into Mustafa and you feel the heat of the lava yeah yeah that was fully immersive really intensive fully saying, immersive. If, if, this was, if we went as a foursome on um, Crystal Maze we wouldn't do very oh, well no, no. we'd get locked in <laughs> our coordination wasn't very good well, that, do you remember the bit code, there's a bit where you around. have to I couldn't see the diagram of the code like, clearly enough because there was three pictures all I saw was just coloured buttons and right. because it was such a small space we were all trying to move around and there's like a delay so you think oh there he is so yeah. you start walking next thing you know you've hit into each other into so it. I just kind of hid behind a corner just shoot him with one arm like ooh yeah. Ooh, you know. So I mean, it is it is sort of the premise of it is that you are invading an <coughs> imperial facility or Mustafar. You're getting in there to get some secret weapon back, and they have a little intro with Cassie and Andor, played by Diego Luna, which is really yeah. I was not expecting that. That's pretty cool. So you'll see. Cannon is definitely pre Rogue One, unless yeah. he survived. Who knew? You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks good for a nuclear bomb yeah. Kind of explosion. Yeah, that's true. There it goes again. Um. It's I've got to say, I've got to say this. When you fired the gun, and you could, tar- I mean, you could target anything, yeah. and you could just see your the trail of the, the blasters going off into the distance. And the damage as well. And you see them coming towards you, and you could dodge them. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But what I really like, I was saying this to the guys earlier. When that, I don't know what you call it, some sort of weird that lava, lava thing, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, coming out of the. Um, the yeah, lava the lava, lava, yeah, the big lava monster. He starts shooting these balls of molten rock at you. You could take it out with a with a gun. With a gun. Yeah. That was cool. There's a lot of moments where you're sort of thrown down a corridor and it's a dead end and you don't know what, you have to figure out what to do something. <laughs> we, really early on we figured out that we were basically told there's, we've got to find a way out and we're all just stuck in the corridor. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, we to be, as, as soon as we, we got hold of the together. guns, yeah. one of you guys just shot you. <laughs> I'll hold my hands up now. I picked it up and pulled and the trigger the straight away. away. And then you all went, who did that? And I went, I, no, I just shot the wall. But as soon as, wall. as soon as everyone said, who did that? I thought, don't say anything, Graham. They'll never invite you back. Just don't say anything. Did no one shoot? each other I tried oh, I yeah. shot someone in the back of the head while I was trying to shoot a stormtrooper I could see one of you guys shooting our commander the guy yeah. in blue just yeah. like well, yeah. <laughs> I just got you just saw a stormtrooper and thought oh yeah. get him I loved it going down the lift and you just see in the the depth and breadth of that facility yeah. yeah and you step out and then you're just taking out cameras I was, do you know what I was disappointed with what? the little mouse droid I was what trying to it? shoot it and I couldn't oh. it was just weaving <laughs> every time I yeah. yeah, the put in the, the the bit we had to punch the code in using the coloured buttons. Uh, my problem with that is I couldn't see my hand. Yeah, so I was trying to touch it, and we we did like five or six attempts on yeah. that. Yeah, I wondered at well, what point are they going to the one that got us out? At what yeah. point are they going to actually the staff are going to come in and say yeah. you yeah. have yeah. to yeah. do K- this? K2 mate. takes over. Did they? When you're that oh, K2 level of, of, he kept of saying, not. you're really not good at this, are you? So all right, calm down. Yeah, so you're guiding through with K2SO. Yeah. And you have a little encounter with Darth Vader oh, as well in there. Spoiler alert. I was going to say yeah. spoiler alert. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll warn people before. We'll warn people before. But, um, but yeah, that's pretty fucking epic. You, you were terrified. I'll be honest, <laughs> I hid around a corner. And I think you guys said it. Even though you know it's going to deflect every single shot. You still try. You yeah. still try. Yeah. I tried to say, I was going to say, you shoot his head, you shoot his arm, and I'll shoot his foot. Three, two, one, bang. No. This yeah, I tried a similar thing. Like, if I shoot really quickly at his feet and then at his head, surely he can't make it. So, yeah. no, bang, bang. Yeah. And then one of them came back in at me. Yeah, yeah. bastards. Yeah. Yeah. The thing that, the feeling really that I was like taken back by was when we went on that little transport across the molten rock, I started getting a bit of vertigo and I could feel yeah. my knees yeah. wobbling. Like, if I fall off this, yeah, am I going to die? Me too. Yeah. Oh, I, was, <laughs> I didn't like that. I did wonder if you stepped off the platform and you're going to just drop into anything or are we actually slightly 
Because he didn't feel like we were going up or down at any point, did he? He felt like we were in lift. You know what? I I thought to myself, health and safety must have been all over this thing. Yeah. I'm going to just run into things. (laughs) I'm not going to tiptoe in. When the bridge seat's extended, I pegged it across. I love doing that. Yeah. It was great, it made it more real. Because that's what you do. The gear they give you is well heavy though. Yeah. I mean, it's like, a, it's like a vest with like a backpack on it. feels like you're wearing a helmet. Battery, doesn't it? Because there was yeah. nothing else connected to us. Yeah. Yeah. And we've, got, we've got a lovely photo of the four of us uh, standing outside afterwards with all uh, the gear on. Yeah, I don't look massively happy, I'll be honest. <laughs> My face is quite red from up in summer. Oh, we've got well. two of them, haven't we? Yeah. We've got two shots of it. Yeah, Graham looks pretty chuffed with himself. I'm doing like a, a sexy pose. With the gun. Graham, Graham said um, they probably photoshopped the guns out. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Uh, Real blasters. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That'd be awesome. No, just completely. No, remember, because like, of the Pantolo thing, we're just going to remove Oh, yeah, that. yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. walkie-talkies or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good callback. Very good callback. Let's take a picture of that bit on the blog. We will. Oh, we're getting digital email. copy <laughs> sent to us. Boom. Yeah. Yeah. Boom. So we'll put that up when we, when we get it up. And Matt, you said you're wow. a gamer. How does that compare to... Some of the stuff you've done in the past. Well, from like arcades growing up, this is this has been my fantasy since I think twelve. Like being immersed in a in a, in a game. So honestly, it's it's uh, until the next one. This is gonna stick stick in my head a bit, you know. Yeah. Well, Brady was saying that her fe- feelings are that she's not done this herself, but that is the future of cinema. That kind of immersive walk through yeah, experience. Yeah, like someone someone got a bit aroused by that. Right? It's yeah. going to be a... Uh, no. Got oh, I thought you were driving. It's just <laughs> the gear stick. No, she's not. Right, put it away. No, there's going to be wet patches as well. If it wasn't yeah. Star Wars, what would you like to see that experience around what I film? Think you'd like to see in Halo, like a Halo VR. Well, I was, like was going to say Starship Troopers, which, uh, oh, which Halo yeah. is, is based it on. Was a bit, very isn't it was Starship yeah. Troopers yeah. with all the kit. Yeah. An alien. Alien would be sick. Imagine, like, hiding from <laughs> a. <laughs> feeling like bits amazing. of water yeah. upon you where it's above you. <laughs> yeah, it's just what you go in the house, you walk up the stairs and just look at a girl riving around on a bed. <laughs> not, exactly, not exactly that exciting, yeah, is it, really? Sure yeah. VR's get already. vomited all over. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> eat me, eat me. Yeah. What else could we say that's stupid? Um, <laughs> Ghostbusters <laughs> would be good. I mean, as, yeah. a, as an immersive game, four of you as well. Well, there is a Rick and Morty uh, VR, VR game. Really? Yeah, 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 on nice. PlayStation. Yeah. Very cool. cool. Still trying to think of uh, <laughs> shit VR we'll experience. Can I change the subject slightly as well? Yeah. Slightly. Um, I went to a restaurant earlier, yesterday, or the day before, and there was a cheese called Wookie Hole. Nice. You've probably heard of it. Wookie Hole Caves? Yeah. Yes, so it's fermented there, yeah. which gives it a really, the waitress said, earthy taste. But as I drove here today through the country fields, I realised what she meant was shit. Yeah. <laughs> and that's probably why they called it Wookie Hole. Yeah. <laughs> The Wookiee Hell Caves. I've never, I've never, I've never, like I've never yeah. enjoyed eating shit or, or something that tastes like shit <laughs> so much in my it. life. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was, yeah. I mean, it was smooth and dark and shit, mate. It was good. Yeah. Yeah. It was the shit. There you go. Wookie I think what, what I really appreciate about this is for that, you know, 15, 20 minutes we were in there, we all felt like we were in Star Wars. We were trying to get the um, artifacts. In reality, we were just in like a few corridors with some heaters next to our feet and yeah. it's crazy to think that that makes well, you somewhere else. Did any of you lift up the visors at any point? No, no, I didn't. No. Okay, I, I had to adjust mine because I lost focus. Right. So I think it was because my helmet wasn't tight enough so the, 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 the picture was blurring. Um, so when I, I lifted it up to see if it was okay so it just needs to be adjusted and I saw we were just all in a grey room and I, all of you guys were just looking around random directions and I flipped him back down again. But I mean, the rooms you're in are really small, aren't they? Yeah. It's a tiny little installation, really. It's like standing in a small bathroom, yeah. uh, and it's going from room to room. But but because of the depth and the distance of the, the VR, yeah, you feel it feels like it feels a mer- huge. You, you feel like you're running around inside a warehouse or something, you know. It would have been kind of funny if you did lift up your visor and you just saw some like security guard eating popcorn, <laughs> like, oh, you're all right, I'm Keith. Or Yoda. Yeah. Or Yoda. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I tried to record the whole thing, yeah. but uh, down, a woman pulled back a curtain and saw me with my phone out, and she was like, "I the told fact you, that you were holding it up like a holy grail." <laughs> I was yeah. trying she was to record the kick you out. Yeah, I, I thought, thought that so was, too. Sorry, guys, you're gonna have to leave. Yeah, <laughs> that would have been an uh, interesting uh, development. I'm sure that the footage or the sound of that will be online you know what I somewhere. Love? When Vader pulls that geezer over with a force and just stabs him right through. Yeah. yeah. 
a little bit of the heart. It was a sword. So the, the weapon. It was like a weird. It was like a lightsaber. With a gap in the middle. Ancient yeah. lightsaber, yeah. Kind of like the Halo. Yeah. Yeah. Like the Halo yeah. Yeah, but yeah. So you think that's something we're going to see in a future Star Wars film? Well, it's got to be canon now. Is it's that got canon? to be important. It's got to have some relevance to Star Wars Universe. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Vader's got it. I mean, if, if, if Kylo to get gets a sword. Vader's castle mm. in 9, why not? Yeah, man. Because if Vader's got it, he's put it in his castle. It's, like it's Ray's new lightsaber. It'd be pretty cool if it was, <laughs> wouldn't it? If it so, is canon... Kassan seems really like it, you know into it in that yeah. whereas Rogue One he's a bit like oh yeah I guess I'll just kill some guy then yeah, most yeah. of the time so I wonder what happened to him you know make him a bit less did he have Solo's pistol as he did. well he yeah. did yeah he did so how yeah. does that go from him to wherever he, well to um, who's the actor you were talking about this play in the new Han Solo movie uh, Alden Aaron Wright no 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 the He's in True Detective. He's also in the yeah, Woody Harrelson. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. he gives it, doesn't oh, he? Oh, sure he does. So yeah. how does he give it to Woody Harrelson? Right, okay, yeah. Find out on next week's episode of Black Wars. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> Tune in for the May 25th episode when we actually see the film. <laughs> you know, Where are you going to be seeing sorry. it? You got you guys, are you going to be seeing it together? Well, we'll, we'll try to. Solo. He lives in Plymouth and I live right. sort of Yeovil and Wales. So I was we'll born in Plymouth, good choice. Yeah, all right, cool. So hopefully we'll opening it, yeah. day. Yeah. I'm How sure long did you take to get here today, you guys? What time did you sell from Plymouth? Um, about ten, wasn't about it? About half ten. About ten. Yeah. And then, and then all day. we left about one from nine. It's a good job I enjoy driving. All day for ten minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Weird. I hope it was worth it. And a little bit of lunch or dinner yeah. without supper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm questioning my very reality that yeah. I exist yeah. in now. Yeah. You kind of just want to take this headset. It's like Lawnmower Man. Yeah, it's like yeah. you can't go back now. You, see, yeah. you can't go back into normal reality. I want to be back. It's like Tron. This is why Flynn from Tron went back into Tron. because And Cypher in the Matrix. Yeah, exactly. He just Tron wanted to live the high life in there instead of living in the cave. Yeah. I don't blame him. I'd go back. Right. Hands down. <laughs> should, we, the... should we get some drinks ordered? Yeah, sounds good. Well, thanks very much for... for coming down all this way to be on the anytime be on the show and to experience it it's been a pleasure to have you on you got anything to add Jude let's cut back to us in the studio yeah. <laughs> alright then bye 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 so good being in Stratford wasn't it oh man I've what was your favourite bit I, I don't know I couldn't possibly say <laughs> it's not like we recorded this bit last week is it no, no. Brady it's your birthday next week we're going to try and come up with something special oh, for you God. some kind of surprise oh. <laughs> Um, I'd rather be excited really, yeah. or terrified yeah, be some both. sort of Terror. be afraid be very Fruit afraid cake or something <laughs> oh what? my god please do it yeah alright you have to cake, bake it though say. protein Protein cake. Yeah. You have to make Ooh. it by hand. I will. I will. It's be <laughs> raw mushrooms. <laughs> it's a big piece of meat. It's just, it's just no a meat. protein shape. There you go. With a can- <laughs> candle in it. Hey. Oh. All right. Um, I've been John Galantini. I've been Brady Tippett. I've been Chico. And may the force be with you. Bye. Bye.